another kind of inefficient language that's actually similar to repetition is redundancy. Redundancy means using two or more words that both mean the same thing. And so you've got extra words because of that. Uh, for example, I will often see something like, uh, the dog barked. at 3 a.m. in the morning. This is extra words because a.m. means morning. So I can either have the dog barked at 3 a.m. or I can have the dog barked uh, at 3 in the morning. I don't need both of those. So I'll just get rid of that and just say the dog barked at 3 a.m. Um, I'll see this very often with amounts of money. I'll see things like the shoes cost $20 dollars. <laughs> And this doesn't work, or this is redundant, because the dollar sign means dollars, and the word dollars means dollars. And so what we're saying here is the shoes cost $20 dollars. We don't need both dollarses. So you can, again, get rid of one or the other. Um, I'll see this also with things like um, the truck was big in size. Big is a size. Uh, are we trying to say instead, oh, it, no, it was big in shape? Uh, it was big in color? Uh, so big in size is once again a redundancy. You don't need these extra words. So that's something to look at when in your writing. If you've got some of these things where you've said the same thing twice and you don't really need to do that. Um, we also sometimes get uh, wordiness. Uh, where we have some extra words that we don't really need in the sentence. Uh, so something like the plate that was on the table had cookies that were stale. And so once again, we've got some extra words. We really don't need that was because um, we have uh, already, we can just say the plate on the table. We don't need to say that was. And we then have had cookies that were stale. Well, we can get rid of that were and move stale over here. Uh, the plate on the table had stale cookies. So now we've got something that's more efficient and more effective that way. Um, another e example of wordiness uh, that I will sometimes see is uh, where we talk about the office assistant was in charge of maintaining the copier supplies. What we have here, once again, we've got some uh, extra words in here that we really don't need. Uh, another thing that we have in this particular sentence is we have a very inactive sentence. We have this office assistant, and the office assistant isn't doing something, but rather the office assistant is being something. He's being in charge. What we can say instead of was in charge of, we can just say the office assistant maintained the copier supplies. And once again, we've cut out a bunch of extra words. We've made this sentence more direct, more clear, more active, uh, more interesting for the reader because it is more active. 
Uh, another related form of wordiness is when you start a sentence with there. Either there is or there are. Uh, once again, a lot of times these kind of sentences are very inactive and they kind of go backwards. They're kind of um, not as direct as they should be. So for example, I might have there are many people who oppose the death penalty. What we have here is a sentence where things are backwards. Uh, we have the verb is are, which again is a very weak one, and we have the subject of the sentence further off along in this, and the sentence, you're kind of backing into it this way. What you probably want to do when you've got this kind of a sentence, you can usually cut out a bunch of extra verbiage. Get rid of this there are in the front, and get rid of who here, and presto, we have a much more direct, much less wordy sentence. We have many people oppose the death penalty. So what we have here is a much more effective sentence. It goes frontwards instead of backwards. Another kind of backwards sentence is when you use the passive voice. The passive voice is when you have something where the subject of the sentence is not actually the uh, entity in the sentence that is doing something. Uh, so for example, I might have something like, the Jeep was driven by the general. This is a backward sentence because the Jeep is the subject of the sentence, but the Jeep isn't doing anything itself. It's getting something done to it, that it is, was, was being driven. Um, and the person who's actually doing something in this sentence is the general, and he's way off at the back end. This sentence can be made much more efficient by taking it out of the passive voice and making it active. And so instead of saying, the Jeep was driven by the general, which has the general way off at the back of the sentence, and generals are too important to put off at the back of the sentence. The other thing is you probably want to emphasize the general because he's driving his own Jeep. Uh, most generals that I don't know wouldn't drive their own Jeep. I mean, that's what staff sergeants are for. So I would probably rework this whole sentence and say the general drove the Jeep. Now we have the general at the front end of the sentence where he's being emphasized. You've now put the emphasis on the general being the driver. And so what we have now is a much more direct sentence and it's also putting the emphasis where this emphasis ought to be. Now, uh, these last few I've mentioned uh, all reflect another type of inefficient language, which is anything that uses forms of the verb be. That is, is, am, are, was, were. Again, we're looking for active sentences, and be is not an action verb. It's a state of being verb. And so when you use be, what you're doing is you're taking action out of your sentences. We want sentences to be active, and so we want sentences without forms of to be. And so you can see this when we had the passive voice, was, there's our form of to be. Um, we have the office assistant was in charge of maintaining. Uh, we have the plate that was on the table. And so those sentences are kind of, um, I would say, pudgy or out of shape. They need to trim down a bit. And this is an exercise you might want to try. It's really, really challenging. But if you can pull it off, it's a really good exercise. Take one of your own paragraphs. Look through the paragraph for every single instance of be. The is, the am, was, were, are, all of those. 
try to rewrite that paragraph without using a single B of any sort. It's really hard. But if you can do that, if you can pull all of the B out of a paragraph, you're going to end up with a really tight, direct, efficient, effective paragraph. So um, I'd say it's hard, but if you can do that, you will have a good paragraph.